Don't get coronavirus in your heart. Let's do it. It's the base. L O S O underscore underscore G. All right. All right. So my name is Garrett Ray, and uh, I met the base in college. Watch you guys grow for a little bit. Myself, I'm a uh, a practicing or a soon to be practicing landscape architect. I've worked on plenty of projects within this city, uh, some of them residential and more private, uh, other than other ones, uh, nonprofit, you know, working in uh, underserved communities and a few, uh, a few government projects that you guys might have uh, heard of. Uh, he's being modest, man. He's also co-founder of G G Racecapes, right? Is is that how, is that how you say it? Or Racecapes? Yeah, no, no, no. Uh, yeah, so uh, my personal brand is Racecape Design. We are a uh, a design uh, landscape design firm. We basically our modus operandi is to uh, harmonize nature and the people that live in it, right? So uh, that manifests itself in a couple of ways the first way it is is, uh our interaction with you know trees uh and public space who gets to have access (laughs) (laughs) trees only the finest finest in trees uh who gets to have access to public space what that access looks like uh you know uh I think one of my funnest projects I've had up to this point, and it was really a theoretical one, was uh, a project that I worked on in grad school that was based off of the Wall Street slave trade uh, monument, right? And so the project, the the basis for the project was creating a landscape for protest and what a protest landscape might look like, or what even a protest landscape is. So uh, what is that? What is that? Set well, everything on fire. <laughs> you know what? It's funny because when I went into it, that's how I thought about it too. Was like, you know, I was, you know, a black kid coming into a program talking about injustices, right? The first, my first inclination is to burn the motherfuckers down. But, uh, but we went and explored what protest might look like, what might look like in a lot of different ways and, uh, and how you could be nuanced and subtle in a physical representation of protest in a way that is, uh, less, uh, on the nose. So, uh, for example, like, uh, if you guys have ever heard of Richard Serra, right, he, uh, commissioned a, like an art piece in front of the stock exchange called Tilted Arc. Uh, it was in like 95, like 2003. And so the thing about Tilted Arc was it was this, it was basically a big ass wall, right? Just a wall that was set in front of the middle of the stock exchange. It was made out of Cortan steel. It's like this gray, uh, rusty looking metal that looks like it comes off of ships. And they commissioned him to put the art piece there. They commissioned him to put the art piece there, but then they didn't like what he put there. And so they spent the entire time after that trying to tear the motherfucker down. So uh, like in the same way, it's just like, who has the right to public space? Is Mm -hmm. it the people that use the space every day or is it the people that erect or that are asked to erect, uh, uh, I guess, idols? Or monuments to the to the public space itself. Okay. So how did how did you get into landscape architecture? Like, what was the the impetus for you to start? Like, like how do, how does one get into that? Oh, I'm gonna that's give you so I'm gonna give it to you straight. I'm gonna give it to you absolutely straight, right? Because uh, part of it is gonna sound like I don't know some like your your average. Uh, like come up story, but the truth of the matter is, is when I was at GA, which is Greater Allegheny at Penn State, uh, I tried to get into the architecture program. I think twice, right? You're supposed to you're supposed to get in during your freshman year, but I was a freshman and I like to drink and party, right? I don't know who I like to drink and party with at that time, but the 
the fact that remains is like I waited until my sophomore year. They told me no. I waited until junior year. They told me no. Uh, so I was like, you know, I still want to do the design, right? And so they, I guess, pointed me towards the direction of landscape, uh, landscape contracting. Now, the fact remains is that architecture in itself is super, is ridiculously saturated, uh, the industry, with uh, people that look the way you would expect them to look, right? And so uh, uh, it was kind of a blessing in disguise because ain't nobody really hiring architects right now, right? Uh, building construction is necessary but it's also been rated as one of the most polluting industries that there are to date and uh with the world pushing for a green a green outlook uh that's a no-go you gotta put a garden on the top of your building that's the cheat code yeah you gotta absolutely. promise them a garden well you know what it is like okay so with that being said like since 2014 like the initiatives have been all over the place. So you got people trying to put solar panels on top of every roof. You got people trying to put gardens on top of every roof and then claim that they uh, help the heat island effect. Like global warming basically freaks everyone out. And so they're looking for whatever way they can to, uh, to, mitigate, to mitigate its effects. I mean, I, I think it's, it's interesting. So the niche was that you ended up in was kind of, I guess, directed by your path. But are you, is that where you think you'll stay? Do you think you'll stay within landscape ar architecture or is like, um, or is that just a stepping stone or is that part of your, your arsenal? Like what's, what's well, well, before I answer that question, I just want to ask you guys, y'all believe in global warming? Y'all believe in climate change? Bro, it's, it's not something that you believe. I mean, I mean, I guess, I guess, I believe in it. Like I believe in gravity and <laughs> and, and oxygen. But um, yeah, it's it's pretty much a fact. Do you believe like, in COVID? Yeah. <laughs> you believe in COVID? Do you believe in COVID? <laughs> Bro, five G, five G. God, are you telling me it's not real? Uh, you know what? It's so crazy because people, even in my industry, the industry is basically designed to combat global warming, are naysayers. Like, we have people in the same conference room that's, like, that just don't believe it. So, like, I, I don't know. I've actually had to have conversations with these people. And, like, my favorite argument against climate change is, like, the climate's always changing. It's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! The right? It was like, all right, it's what? always changing. And then what? when the fucking atmosphere sets itself on fire, it's like, oh, that's changed too. The whole point of <laughs> climate change is that it's like I I just don't get it. Like, even even for a layman, right? Let's say you don't you haven't looked at any data you don't you don't know this like you wouldn't assume that things that we do would affect the climate long term like you don't you don't think you know burning of coal exhaust all this energy that we're using like like right. like legit like <laughs> you know what the, the crazy part about it is is that uh you know in the 1800s in the 1600s the 1700s only up until the last hundred years have we actually been able to, or have we actually had to worry about this because the industrial revolution has just been that like crazy. Right. Yeah. So like climate change didn't make much of a difference before 19, I don't know, 1940 when we dropped the bombs. Right. And then after that, when we started building things at the speed of light in the fifties, like all of the basically all of the climate change that we have to worry about today was created within the last was created within your parents' timeline. The oh, last hundred years, yeah. We're despicable humans. We are. Not yeah, it's not it's not we. us. It's not it's not us. It's, it's, not us. it's your parents. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Nah. I mean, 
It's, it's people as a collective. It's like, it's hard to have a long-term view, you know, let alone across your lifetime going across generations, you know, and, right. and, it's, and it's people's best interest to advance things and make as much money as possible without real regard of you know, what's left. Right. You know? I mean, I mean, that's the same thing. Like, like developing countries today have some of the worst issues with like, um, you know, environmental issues and things like that. That's because, they're just really hitting, you know, like they're having their industrial revolution of sorts, right? Right now. So right, right the fuck now. So if you go to developing countries like, you know, India, places in Africa, you know, Eastern Europe, shit like that, like, you know, their environmental problems are fucking serious, bro. Yeah. And, and then they're the ones who are, who are going to suffer worse from climate change in general, you know? Yeah. I'm not terribly worried about, you know, people in the first world who who have money and running water, you know, they'll they'll figure this shit out. It's the people right. who, who live on, you know, who live in the Caribbean, particularly surrounded by islands, people who live coastal and in poor ass countries, those are the people who are gonna suffer. Bro, bro, I'm not I'm I'm sure any of you have heard of uh day zero in South Africa. Is literally the day that they run out of water. Like, you know, it's like, you couldn't, I couldn't imagine, I couldn't fathom a fucking water war. Warring over water. Like, it's it's not that far away. Like, these terms have already been created and are projected to happen within the next, I think day one is projected to happen within the next 10 years. So, like, these like, issues are on the floor. Now, on the flip side, people would argue, right? Like, all right, devil's advocate. People would argue that, okay, we've been talking about peak oil, right, for like the mm -hmm. past 60, 50 years. Why hasn't peak oil happened? You know, that would be something like that. So why should I trust this fucking, you know, World War Z, day zero fucking, you know? I, I mean, I don't know, right? One thing hasn't happened yet. That's and and that's basically the the uh, the defense of of climate deniers is that you know it still snows in the winter. Maybe Did a little it snow less this yet. winter. Did it snow snow this winter in New York? It snowed one time this winter. No, or no, one, no one's worried. No one's yeah. worried. Like this it, is the last year we're gonna be able to say that statement. Snow's yeah. done, guys. Now, I, I just said that to bring it up. I think it's a fucking dumb argument, right? Because you can't judge climate, <laughs> you can't judge climate change on what the weather was yesterday, right? Right. Or or you can't, you know, like even even from a standpoint, let's say all the projections are alarmist, right? Let's just say shit isn't going to run out. Wouldn't it be better for the world and and the future in general as if we acted? That was the case, like. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, even in the best case scenario, why not, you know, why you not be conscious it. about it? Yeah. There was a book I was reading once just about like, just, uh, just human um, or just technological progress in general, where it's like, we don't necessarily ever hit the, um, I guess the, those points of scarcity, because um, ideally, and this is, I guess what's happened before, is that when you're when you're anticipating that that scarcity, you start to look for for an alternative for that, and then yeah. then you find that alternative, and then that alternative, that that technology gets developed, and then that's the the sources coming from there become abundant, and then society shifts from, you know, I guess you can call it one tech one technology <laughs> over to to the new technology, and it just keeps happening. Not to I say that like perfect. we can't do that here, but like. Looking at, looking well, I've got story. a perfect example of when that happened the last time, right? <laughs> so, when, when, when do y'all think modern happened? When did modernity happen? Two thousand and three. <laughs> I mean, it depends who you ask. Like, you know, you put anyone in any part of history, it's modern for that time. You know, that's fair. You know what? That is fair. But I would I mean, argue so maybe, that domestication of electricity has been the last. There's no modern without electricity, at least not by today's standards. Thank right? you, but, All right, I'm going I'm to look it up. Whenever the semiconductor became a thing, that's probably when we entered the modern era. Whenever like that shit was even a thing. Let me look it up. 
probably like, 1920, no 1910. I think the first grid was created in San Francisco. But the fact yes. remains, to Jose, to your point, before that point, everyone was using, or we as a people were using wood fuel, gasoline, and all of our, and steam, and all of our uh, technology, cool. right, and coal, and all of our technology up until that point basically ran on those fuels and what they could produce, right? But it wasn't until we basically figured out how to use a new resource that we as a people were able to progress into what we might consider the next, uh, the next, the next level. Modern started when Wi-Fi started. <laughs> That's a good That's point. <laughs> you know, the whole climate denial thing yeah, just reminds me of the 5G shit. Cause it's like this oh whole like God. science and reasoning versus I would just say politics and your feelings and shit like that. Versus, that you don't want to be true. Because it's just like with the, with the whole coronavirus part. thing, it's just like, yeah, like, you know, it's like you have these scientific experts. They're telling, you know, they're putting all this information out there. They're telling you that you shouldn't do something or, you know, like are encouraging you, not really just forcing, not really forcing. And then it's just like there's always going to be someone that's just counter that for whatever reason, like. This mask, I'm breathing in my own carbon dioxide. This is not American way. It's just stupid shit like that. Man. Oh my god! I Yo, mean, people protesting yeah. the mask has to be the the craziest shit ever. The dumbest shit ever. Yo, people are super fucking adamant about it. Like I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm looking online and Reddit and shit like that, and people are super adamant, right? And and then and then you have these people, right, who are sort of middle grounders. It's like, yeah. You know, um, I wear the mask, but I don't believe you should be forced to wear the mask. And I'm like, dude, that's not the point. It's like you should want to wear the mask to be considerate to those around you. Like, it, right. That that's just what it is. And it, and it's one thing to have this culture of individualism, but it's like you you, you take it to a weird extreme where you want to assert your 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 rights when it's not appropriate. Right. Because like other countries don't have this problem. You know, Korea, they don't fucking protest mass like they know how to subdue their people. Well, not, I'm, not, I'm not talking. North Korea. I'm, not, I'm not talking North Korea. They That's where they it. send them when they're behaving bad. They just North like, Korea. Go to North Korea. They go to your grandmother's house. Uh, you know, this chat is getting watched. You said the buzzwords. Yeah. Yeah, this is, this is a Kim Jong Un eat a dick, whatever. Yeah, but I mean, like all these other countries, this is like a uniquely American problem. Like I haven't heard any large group of people in any other country protesting wearing fucking masks. Like it's 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 such a it's such a like low ask. Mm. Like if I yeah if, yeah, how much more simple could it get? Right? Like yeah. what more could we be asking of you? Yeah. But uh, so on to, to, to segue back to landscape <laughs> architecture, what I think is going to be interesting and what I've been reading at least are the repurposing of these public spaces to meet the new need of the people, right? For one, first thing, and I'm just theory crafting out here, is that three years between, yeah, three years from now, there's going to be a lot more outdoor restaurants and a lot more public squares, and the cities are become, going to become a lot, uh, a lot less trafficked, mm. right? In a like way, car that, traffic. Say again. Like people physically moving or vehicles? Physically moving. Got you. Okay. Are going to be a lot less trafficked. Uh, Is this? We're already a starting to see like restaurants trying to see people outside. Right. Uh, the malls, all of America's derelict malls are about to get. Uh, I think that there is currently a push to get people uh, public spaces that they could they could feasibly socially distance in uh, for, you know, like. I guess housing, like doing a housing project right now has to be really tough. Right, any sort of building construction where you're uh, navigating indoors with people uh, has to be really tough. Uh, the public space 
that we've been developing, or the public spaces we've been developing, uh, lend themselves to walking, lend themselves to an actual activity besides being idle in a space. So you're not going to have a barbecue at Shirley Chisholm State Park. I thought you were architecting new malls, like new open. <laughs> last time, last time you were, last time you came on, you told us that you you were working on some park. Shirley Chisholm, uh, the Shirley Chisholm Park. Have you um have you worked on any of the big projects besides um that governor's secret hideout? Uh uh-huh. yeah, so uh okay, so I didn't get to do a lot of work on this, but we did work on the High Line uh back when it was being constructed. Uh we're working on a project right now called Big Spiral and uh it's down in Hudson Yards. It's a complete y- Hold on. I got to remember the NDA. Uh, it's a complete... Uh, it's a... Oh. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to say anything if you don't want to get the lawyers... Right, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, uh, it's a push. It's like a push. As soon as he says the wrong word, we're going to have another lawyer just join the fucking set. <laughs> Out of no way. It's, it's a push to... It's clearly a push to uh, design buildings in a way that can be uh can be characterized as green right uh now i guess the the real question is is it greenwashing or is the building in itself or is the project itself actually green is it sustainable does it source this material sustainably you know uh are the workers being paid uh you know living wages et cetera et cetera uh, or does it have plants on it? <laughs> that's that's where a lot of people exactly, you know. I would figure at least having the plants on it, like at, at bare minimum. Like, <laughs> no, that's generally that's generally where it stops. Though that's that's the thing. Like, uh, in particular, this this project uh, is basically a you know another fucking skyscraper uh, with a. It seems like a like a like a plant cascade around the perimeter of the building and it spirals down to the base. Right. And it's like it's clearly like one of those things that was dreamt up on someone's uh on someone's uh drafting Acid trip. table. Yeah. Oh. Mm. And it was well, someone's drafting table and they're just like, I really I wonder if we can fucking just do this, right? Just like let's just <laughs> too busy asking whether we could and not asking whether we should. Hmm. That's, that's, that's a human thing. I don't even know if you meant to be that deep one on purpose, but <laughs> that was some deep ass shit. These people are like, fuck it. I want to make a square triangular ball. Let's, let's build it. Let's get it. Yo, I, I'm at, I got, I'm <laughs> curious about this. Um, just I had two questions, man. I, I wanted to ask about the, the solar panel shit. Are yeah, yeah. a lot of people asking for that shit? And is that shit really, like, pay off? Does it clearly pay off besides, like, the marketing that they throw up on the websites and shit? Yeah, does it work? Yeah. Yes. Does it work? Yes. So, uh, it's two things. One is new, this government legislation that's being pushed, or at least city legislation in multiple cities that are requiring all new, uh, new building projects to either have a green roof or solar panels or stormwater retention, you know? I think uh, I think people have gotten off on the idea of sustainability to the point where they want to max, they want to minimize unused space, uh, waste space, especially with the expectation of cities doubling. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, so they're really the programs that are pushing for the solar panels. Now, with that being said, uh, Solar panels on a on a small scale will uh, will offset the cost of living utility wise. It's, 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 uh, you're likely, especially during the summer months, if you have a good exposure, you you at a certain point can probably get all of your uh, at least heating or electrical needs during the summer. Uh, Used or uh, I guess 
compensated by the use of solar panels. More importantly is on a larger scale. See, and I guess this is one thing that landscape architecture is really uh, good for is talking about scale, right? It's the scale of the, the sand grain to the scale of the flower, to the scale of the meadow, to the scale of the forest, right? And in the same vein, like for every solar panel that gets put up, that electricity is being generated that wouldn't necessarily be generated in any other way, right? So if you get four panels put up, that's four generation, you know, generators on itself. That's separate from the municipal grid that we know as national grid, right? So once you get communities of people building solar panels, right, they basically uh, start to have the ability to run autonomously from the, from the electrical grid as you know it. Uh, long story short, you know, how is it going to hit you in your wallet? is you could feasibly sell your electricity to Con Edison, right? Yeah, if, you have, if you have a surplus, then I'm not mistaken. Right. But people can band together and decide to, to say F you to the power companies and all together, right? There's a couple of, like, examples about this uh, that have gone globally, like these experiments where people, you know, you'll get like a community of 300 people and they'll live completely off the grid with electric vehicles, with solar panels, with battery power, uh, basically to create microgrids. Right. Oh, that's dope. Yeah, that's pretty dope. That's, well, there, that, that's the way there, of the next 50 years, for sure. So have, you, have you come across any technology that um, ionizes the, the air and causes a lightning thing to strike a ball and then it charge energy like that. Um, it's like, a, it's, it looks like a coil. Um, like a Tesla like, coil? Yeah, like a Tesla coil. I guess you know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> you said like a Tesla coil? Yo, I remember, bro, when I came across Tesla, bro, reading about that free energy movement and yeah. how all his shit got destroyed. How was a 22-year-old not supposed to be fucking skeptical? And dig down the rabbit hole of fucking conspiracy. So I feel like from the age, my man, of 22 till like 27, dude, and that's when I was deep into all this crazy conspiracy shit. Well, you do and know, I, you do know, Jose, that robots are harvesting our energy, and we live in the matrix, and they're taking. That's probably true. Energy. <laughs> but uh, all right, so Jose, I got a conspiracy. <laughs> Right. So are you gonna if you like conspiracy theories, you're gonna love this. So uh Thomas Edison, right, uh and Nikolai Tesla oh, wow. were fucking arch rivals, right, in the twenties and the thirties, right? And so uh Tesla invented AC current and Edison invented DC current, right? And so they both went out and to conquer the country, to conquer the United States, like the US. And so like, you know, fast forward 30 years, like there's a mishmash of everyone's got their AC current. This city has AC, this city has DC, this city has AC, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, Tesla, oh, no, I'm sorry, not Tesla. Edison actually blinded his fucking assistant when he was like, they were doing some experiment in his lab and there was like this crazy experiment or this crazy explosion and uh Edison ended up blinding his his uh his mentor or his mentee or whatever and just just shit himself out of the the game altogether so Edison sells all his shit and lets this new kid, this new guy come in his name was uh George something I but fuck I'm losing it Long story short, he buys up all of he buys up all of the power plants in the country, right? Packages in them, and then basically buys government favors from areas like Tennessee or you know New York or wherever, so that he can uh, so he can lobby and get laws passed to 
to have these cities build more and more of his plants. And like, that's how we got the, that's how we got the electrical grid that we have now, because like, like they basically created the, the antitrust act to stop Con Edison from ruling the world. <laughs> Long story short. And, uh, this dude, he ended up getting extradited from the United States, like, because of all of the corruption, and he just died penniless in Paris. Is this a conspiracy or a true story? Well, I'm sure back before we knew the history, it was a conspiracy, but now it's all been proven. Just like, just like the government selling crack to black neighborhoods. Didn't Tesla die in New York in a New York hotel? Edison, Edison. Oh, you're talking about Edison, my fault. Yeah. When I found out about Nikola Tesla, I said, fuck Edison. Like, why didn't I know about this guy before? <laughs> He's definitely oh, cooler. You ever see a picture of him with the, with the little mustache? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I saw him in um, the Prestige. In the Prestige? Yeah, yo, that's all I was thinking of to the entire time. I thought you were gonna take us on a left turn, like take a left turn in your story and just start with the prestige and shit. I thought he was too. Give a real story. Oh, what? You haven't seen the prestige? Bro, that's like a top notch oh movie. Oh my god, man. bro. It's about you watch that shit. the Nikola Tesla. Is my it man. Really? It's about them too, yeah, bro. All right. It's it's set in that, that timeline, like that time period. You Jacqueline, um, you Jacqueline and um Christian Bale. They play the characters. Oh, word. Yeah. And Alfred is in there too. From yeah, Batman. yeah. Alfred's being uh, Alfred. Yo, so um, I actually want to ask you about like uh, rooftops, like those rooftop gardens that people do there. Because yeah. I think that shit is so fucking dope. And I'm just curious, is is it like you got to get permission to do that shit? Like, or is it if your roof is flat enough, you could just do it? And then it's like, I always, like, you know, in my, when I'm like, you know, a little tipsy or whatever, or daydreaming, and I imagine like being able to have a home with some shit on top, but I'm always like, yeah, I'm worried about the rats and raccoons and shit and pigeons. Aren't like don't don't people gotta worry about that shit too with rooftops? Or falling off the rooftop. I'm I'm afraid of that. Um <laughs> yeah, that should be a worry for dumb people. <laughs> I mean the truth of the matter is, like, let's be serious, right? If you live in a Brooklyn brownstone and you have access to the roof, like no government, I, I very doubt that any government body is gonna give too, too much of a shit if you like start a garden up there. But, uh, but I'm sure, eh, no, nah, I, don't, I don't think there are any real permits, right? To, to build a rooftop garden. And let's be serious. If you think about just like the multi-level, the multi-elevation of like the city, like I can't believe we haven't been doing this for years on, like how is this new? Yo, facts, man. Like every roof is fucking flat, bro. Well, not every roof. A lot of the roofs are flat. And I, re- I used to live on a, on a, on a 32 floor building, the 21st floor. And mm-hmm. all I saw from the top, it, it just looks like duct tape boxes from the top and shit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it's just like, you can make this shit look like lion turtle backs if you want to. Right. Like <laughs> like Avatar. Well, uh, I know, is it Whole Foods? I think there's a Whole Foods in Brooklyn that has a pretty intense rooftop greenhouse where, yes. like, model... Yeah, yeah, I've been there. You have? It's, in, um, it's by, um, whatchamacallit, um, okay. it's in Gowanus. Gowanus. Yes. You too. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I don't yes. too. Yes. The the name of the project escapes me, but this but the 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 idea is there, right? They're looking to repurpose unused space uh, in any way they can, and you know people seem to love growing shit. That is that is for sure. So agriculture is clearly going to take a place there. What's more Yo, unused in your roof? Oh. What? What's up? Like, what's more unused in your roof? I was like, nobody, like, nothing's happening. Just do that shit. Your car? Cars are parked 90% of the time. I want a solar panel car. Okay, whatever. I want a Tesla. <laughs> I want a Tesla, too. Who wants an Edison? I want a fucking Tesla. I want hmm, an Edison. I want that Tesla stock. 
Yo, so um, I remember, and, and I know this is more like a personal thing. I remember last year you said you were looking for, you were looking to buy a home and shit like that. Yeah. Is that still the case? I'm curious just, I guess, how you see homes since you, you know, you're Ted Mosby. And are you uh, going to put solar panels and plants on your home? Well, all right. If I'm going to be, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I had some really, okay. So uh, we started a process of trying to buy a co-op and found it to be very difficult uh for (laughs) am i gonna i don't i don't know if it's all like discrimination but there's definitely a level of like discrimination there just like when we were trying to go we were trying to buy a a co-op in fort lee right and i could just tell when we were sort of like torn with the uh with the real estate agent and just like sort of the vibes we were getting from the other residents just like, mm. did, he, did he say? Did they, you, did he how'd say you go that? dress, bro? Like, oh, what were you doing? Baggy pants, do rag, or yeah, you know, I was, <laughs> I was false flagging. Were you dressed <laughs> for, for success, bro? <laughs> did the guy say racist stuff? Like, yo, this is where you and your homies can play cards. Nah, <laughs> but she was like, what do you do? <laughs> we're looking for diversity. That's we're always looking- the key word. This is where you always she was like, what do you do and and where's your job? Like, can I call them? Oh, what? Oh, nah, bro. That's discrimination. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, long story short, as far as the home buying process goes, uh, so part of me feels like this is a cop out, but the truth is, is that the neighborhood I'm in right now is currently gentrifying. It's happening. Uh, no thanks to like, you. Is there a bike shop? Mm-hmm. Say what? Is there a bike shop? Not yet. This it hasn't gotten that bad yet. Are sure. people are do you, are people jogging in your neighborhood? That's the first yeah. sign. Oh, that's when you know when, when people feel safe. Oh. That's when you're like, oh, that's it. It's over. We got it. Wait, oh. we got an Aldi. An Aldi popped up. A what? An Aldi. You guys have Aldi. It's a grocery store. Yeah. Oh, the there's, Aldi. There's, there's an Aldi in Brooklyn. But- it's like way it's, it's in the boondocks. Yeah, it's time. Uh, it's happening. It's my like gateway. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to stay in New York when I eventually end up by, getting my own home and shit. I don't, I don't know, man. Me. When I think when I think about how much bang for the buck out here, son, like that shit always like, ugh. Nah, nah man. That's why we got to make sure this shit blows up. So what? Blow, what are we blowing up? The base, so that oh. we can be oh, yeah, millionaires. That- and then our commercials, you know, for for our people who've been supporting us from the beginning, the you know, which is for, your commercials will be cheaper. Hey, I'm with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got a I got a marketing budget. <laughs> no, but uh, so they racially uh, profiled you, and then what happened after they racially profiled you? Uh, well, okay. Long story short, I basically decided to invest in. I'm gonna buy this house, so the one I grew up in. And uh, and use the equity to renovate it, turn it into a, a multifamily. So turn it into a Look solar, at panel, you. solar panel, grassroots. Look nah, at this, for real, I just want a balcony. <laughs> <laughs> really, yo, I want a rooftop so badly. That's why I was asking you all those questions, bro. Yo, <laughs> rooftop is bomb. I think that shit is so dope, bro. Yo, all you need is like a little shade on a roof, and you basically there. The only problem with a rooftop is if you got neighbors next door that have a taller building. Yeah, no, then it's man. awkward because, like, yeah, they like that. looking out their window, and you, I don't know, smoking and drinking. They look down at you. Yeah, it, well, t- literally. <laughs> Yo, I've been watching the um those uh architectural uh shows on YouTube, bro. The ones where they do those tours of those houses. Wow. Yeah, it feels like MTV Cribs, yo. I love them shits, bro. That's when I found that. That's when I real not realized, but that's when the hole was dug deeper in you know my realization of how poor I actually am. Because these houses yeah. is so beast, deep. my man. So deep. Bees, be they're mansions, but they're like in the middle of no f- fucking nowhere and shit like that. They be staying shit to them like, yo, this is gonna be fifty thousand more, and we're gonna have to have this. They like, sure. Marble in the kitchen. Fuck it. I'm like, what? <laughs> Our money, bro. You crazy? Nah, yeah, we're we're pretty we're pretty on low in the wrong. Why didn't anybody become a rapper? 
in our crew. Yeah. Who that was supposed to be. Who goes yeah. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. He did the intro for the other rundown. Yeah, but like. Alicia. I mean, but like. He's you not, know, we he's know what rapper. kind of rapper you mean. Yeah. 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 <laughs> why, why, why is he just sipping on lean and fucking all the fucking time and having tattoos? Where are his tattoos? Why didn't he dye his hair rainbow colors? He yeah, Penn what's State, going bro? on? We all went to Penn State. Nobody was going to rap coming out of Penn State. No. no. <laughs> Not in no. the time we were there. Maybe Howard. Maybe Howard. Howard was nice like that? I don't I know. Even... Big, curly hair. Big Howard, right? He was Husky? No, I meant HBCU, bro. Oh Howard, how do you? Oh. Yeah, so, you were... who are y'all talking about? Who's Howard? Uh, I don't know. That who was that was um that's Hugo bo- Hugo's boy. Ah, uh. <laughs> you said Hugo's boy. As, Hugo's as boy. As far as rappers that came Hugo's out around boy. the time when we peaked, mm. it would be the J Cole Kendrick, um, yeah, Drake area. J Cole went to St. John's, so if we had somebody along the lines of J Cole, we could have rolled his coattails. Up until stardom, but nobody took rapping seriously. I also don't think we would have allowed each other to rap. Yeah, I'm pretty uh, sure none of us would have. Our jokes. I, would be I agree with that. Our jokes would be far. We, we crushed dreams. Nobody wanted. To show. Nobody <laughs> wanted to actually unveil our dreams to each other at that point in time. <laughs> no. What no. dreams? The dream. <laughs> of being a rapper. Dreams. 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 Oil. Oil. What? Alcohol. Oh, 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 you cooking? Bitch, you cooking? Oh. <laughs> you think it's cooking? <laughs> but now, oh, now rapping's easy. I think anybody can do it. Dude, you just need dope beats, bro. Yeah. That's all you need, a dope beat. And you can but that's the thing. It's, 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 Who it's said talent? Hard. You liar. <laughs> what you say, boy? It, I said it's even more of a crapshoot now because, like, even back in the day, if you were nice, it was still kind of like hard to get on. Yeah, like, like you kind of had to be in the right place in the right time, right? Like the guys who hustle and work hard, right, but were nice, ended up becoming like underground guys, right? So you can still become successful, but I, I think now it's harder to legit have a long career because, like you said, everyone and their moms could rap. Right? right, everyone can make a SoundCloud. Anyone can say bullshit over a dope beat, right? So it's it's just a crapshoot, you know. It's like who sees you at the right time. It's yo. I mean, you know, who who do you think would have tried to be a rapper? Like if we just took ourselves, time traveled into the future ten years, like when you know when the tech was like there. Do you mm-hmm. think any of us would have tried that shit? I would have, for sure, with Garrett. Yeah. I was just thinking that if, if we if in today where we were back then we would be Vine stars, we would have been yo like, fag. We would have been rapper. We would have did the whole nine, bro. It's so true. You know what it is though. Uh, I would have tried. And, I would have probably had had free time. Break slow. Damn. Damn. I'm not gonna feign hard. Like I, I, I'm not hard, bro. L- listen to these guys. They they think they're born too early. They think they're the dream cast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not saying I'm not saying we if only we were <laughs> just too late know, that's, I'm okay. not saying we would have blew up in any way to shape or form I am <laughs> fuck <laughs> you you, don't, you wouldn't yo you don't have you don't have that confidence what it I'm takes I'm not saying we would have blew up but I think we would have had we would have you wouldn't have time bro and we would have just been so. doing shit to do it just like Halo Ellen, we would have been if we if we if we were not I think for us, Halo is our Dreamcast. If we were playing Halo around the time when it was doing Twitch TV and all that stuff, where the oh, bro, bro, we had all easy because we were hilarious, bro. We, we it didn't even matter if we won; we were funny, and that's yeah. all. Yeah. Like, we were yeah. mad funny, even with losing. It was hilarious. It would have been it would have been a daily show. We it would have been yeah. the, it would have been put it. on the put on the reels. It would have been jokes like the loss of like reels, jokes, bro. So I think I think we missed like not missed, but I think the time missed us. Honestly, I mean, I mean, if time you don't us, start uh, a Twitch TV channel, it's not stop you. We would have had a Twitch TV. We would have put it on. We'd have had people come in and out the dorm room. We would have been making mad jokes. We would have been running from the RAs. Like it would have been a fun time on camera. 
Yeah, yeah. would have been canceled, bro. One of y'all, one of us would have said some stupid ass shit that they said. It probably would have been me. We literally recorded a boxing match in the. I mean, <laughs> yeah, people, people Yo, we would have loved that shit. So we should have. Wait, didn't didn't some of those matches wasn't a thing yet though? Huh? We would have been alright. We would have been good right now. We would have been fucked. Oh yeah, yeah nah. this entire shit from like <laughs> years ago and then pulled it up. Right. But back then we would have been good. We would have been good. We didn't have the Are those boxing matches on YouTube somewhere? Who whose messages? Eric? Nah, I think the boxing matches, at least I know at least the one with Paul is either on Facebook, buried in the muck, or like, on YouTube. But it's terrible quality. Like we didn't we didn't even have oh, the well, yeah. We didn't even have the camera to keep up with all the stupid shit we was doing in college. IPhone. The freshman year, fresh, no, freshman year, your freshman year was the year the iPhone came out. Yeah, yeah. but was it? You, who had an iPhone? I ain't had no iPhone money. Jansen was the only one I knew with an iPhone. I had a sidekick. I recorded on my sidekick. Oh, that Man, little blurry shit. It was terrible. That was cool. He had the sidekick too. I had there the, it I had, is. I had Alex first though. <laughs> Slow down. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, I was so jealous of people with sidekicks, bro. Like, legit jealous. Until I met you, then I was like, oh. No, nah, no, nah, I was still, like, I was still jealous, bro. I was still jealous, man. I wanted that sidekick so badly. But at, at this age, we got to stay on the present point of, like, what's happening and what's cool, just so we can be, like, relevant. Yeah. Uh, I'm so, not doing no fucking... So, in relation to Black Lives Matter and landscape architecture. Okay. Uh, I would get in somewhere. Hey, look at that. The transition. What you about to so, build? About to build uh, a, a cannonball, a catapult <laughs> to fucking knock down statues. <laughs> to throw Trump the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm going to say something about, I guess, That's some fun. drama that was, I guess, found on Instagram in regarding to a specific couple of companies right so after blm came up with the george floyd thing everyone started issuing their sort of like public statement right as to uh you know we stand with etc cetera, etc cetera. not that i don't believe them you know it all kind of seems kind of like a publicity stunt almost right and so this one firm uh which will go unnamed but is a accumulation of four letters starting with M and ending with A. Uh, what? I guess. What? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, yeah, it's like, literally four letters and I can't figure this out. I don't know it either. I can't figure it out. Oh, I think Maga? I know. No. And so, <laughs> like, his workers, I guess people in the firm popped up and they got up and they was like, yo, how are you going to issue this statement when you have clearly given people like directive not to hire uh or not not to hire you've clearly given people the directive to hire people that look a certain way right or fit a certain uh fit a certain aesthetic yeah ooh, aesthetic nice hmm? sorry no i didn't mean to interrupt you keep going yeah uh and basically the shit just blew up in his face right because uh at least up until climate up until climate change became like a, a huge issue, landscape architecture uh, is was arguably a rich white woman or like a married white woman's profession, right? Like landscape architecture was responsible for designing things like Central Park or like the Parterre Gardens in France. Seneca Village, right? like parks, spectacles, like nature as this thing that we look at and like we visit when we're not in our apartment sort of thing and uh that's led to a certain amount of uh of homogeneity when it comes to what the what your co-workers look like yeah man i feel like a lot of these companies like um i mean and and, and I, I guess i can't really blame them for for our i understand I guess why they would it's like they have to do something and everyone's just kind of like doing the bare minimum just to right. cover their asses to be like yeah you know i did it too but what i want to fucking know is how i want to know your fucking numbers how much how many people you hired at your company that are black 
and how right. much you fucking pay them. To me, that's the to me that's the only shit that matters, man. Like but you gotta start asking now, but you see what? And I agree with you, Jose Od, and I'm on your side. But I also know how it feels to be in a rut where you can't get no job and you can't even ask questions like that because you can't. Mm. There's places where you there's spots in your life where you really aren't in that space to negotiate where niggas can throw you a bone. You like, damn. I need money. Like I gotta get paid. Well, hey, that's the way it is. Like you don't. There's nothing else you could do but deal with that lower. Niggas throw you scraps, and you just gotta kind of take that out. Or Sorry, work man. in the mail room. Yeah. That right, was like, the old you, thing. You right? work work, like, fuck out of here. Uh, <laughs> it's like, like for example, like hiring a, you know, a graduate, a bachelor's graduate, a black female bachelor's graduate as a secretary like you know clearly like their like their mind is worth way more than that but that's as far as you're gonna let them you know progress in your in your company right so like it, i don't know it gets fun it, it gets weird right because you can't just say how many black people work for you uh because then they'll pull every janitor that they have files. <laughs> He's full of the janitorial files. Yo, he's been here for ten years, man. This is like <laughs> our longest running, longest running uh, employee. Employee of the month. <laughs> we gotta get this nigga a plaque. <laughs> I, I do. Oh, I, any any company I do link with in the future, I do want to. I do. I would want to ask them, what did you do during the Black Lives Matter? Like, what did you do when, it, what, how did you speak out or speak up during the George Floyd incidents? How did your company handle that? I ain't asking that shit. Are you not asking? You <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, not unless like, you know, I'm my own boss. I'm not going to be like, yeah, I want this job that pays me double what I'm making now. What did you guys do? Did you guys, you guys only put up the, the, the black square? That was it? Oh my God, you put the Black Lives Matter hashtag? You did it all wrong. <laughs> That, that's interesting. I wouldn't even think to ask like, like a company that like, what'd you do for George? Like, it, it, it makes sense. So I wouldn't fault anyone for asking that question. But like, it, it, it's it, it's it's not even I don't care. It's high. It's just highly specific to the situation. It's like I wouldn't ask a fucking I don't know, like a, a bus operator. What did they do for you? know what I'm saying it's like. <laughs> like specific to the situation, the type of environment you work in, right? So if you work for a big company, right, that has a lot of influence, power, you know, whole marketing teams, things like that, I'd be like, okay, it's appropriate to ask them what they did about this specific situation. But if you go to like a small business, oh, what'd you do about George Floyd, hashtag Black Lives Matter? Like that's almost like, it's not a crazy question, but it's like small businesses can't af necessarily afford to, you know, advocate for every single thing that happens. Like they have to survive. So, um, uh, I want to, if you don't mind, I want to pitch. Uh, I'm going to repitch this project uh, from the Wall Street slave trade, just because it is so. It's really relevant right now with the protests. Is uh, the basis for the project was uh, making a landscape that you couldn't ignore, right? And so currently, uh, outside of Water Street and Wall Street, there's, I guess, a plaque, like a little plaque and uh, like, you know, like a little, like, I don't know, Wall Street garden, sort of like, you know, some, some trees or whatever, right? That are some, and the plaque has on it uh, what the slave trade looked like in 17, I think it's like 1716 or 1764 or something like that. And uh, when you think about the amount of bodies and the amount of human capital that came through that port, right? And then particularly New York and the North like accepted history as not being that racist, right? It's like the, the country is racist, but the North isn't really that racist, right? So, or at least that's how it was marketed to me, right? And uh, and so the project uh, explores ways that we can make uh, a landscape conducive to protest, 
And in short, I'm just going to give it to you in short. And there's some some photos I can give you, uh, some renders of the of what the space looks like that I can give you after we're done. But is uh, yes, it please. Basically, used basically the concept was to use like these seven foot bollards that are wrought iron that sort of like stick out of the ground. And it's like the idea is that you couldn't you couldn't walk through this space with your head down and your headphones on because you'd walk flat into one of these uh, one of these obstructions, these bollards. And uh, with the bollards also came the like a retractable feature, right? So they they come in and out of the ground. Uh, and you know, in a time of protest, the bollards could deploy right and prevent uh vehicles from driving into protesters right because that's yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and so uh these bollards were supposed to like they popped up in different different parts of manhattan uh that all have different racial uh racial histories like fort green uh where you know, it was sort of just like a, a slave witch hunt around the same time or uh, or the African burial ground, which I'm sure you guys have been to. Right. If you haven't been to, you should go. In downtown and Wall Street? Not Wall Street. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. Wall Street, uh, right? Not in Wall Street proper, but uh, but yeah, in that area. Like um, right by the bridge. Yeah. 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 But uh, I mean, that's just one. You know, it's funny. I had a partner when I was doing that project, and uh, um, and this is not to say that she's race deaf or anything, but uh, so like she, like my teacher was really fucking giving me shit that year, and like we were supposed to expand on each other's projects. So she had the Lorelei out in the Bronx, and I had the Wall Street slave trade, and she did this thing with like mirrors to make it so that if you were walking through the space, like you're erased, like you're erased in the space, sort of like how they tried to erase the history. And I was like, that is, that's, you know, poetic, but that's not <laughs> black. <laughs> there is a, to look, to look at yourself. That's what well, every reflection no, out there in the building is yourself, for. Right. So it's like you walk in a space, like say you were walking uh, next to a glass building and then you were looking to the building, but you can't, you see everything except for you. Okay. Hmm. Right. Which, like I said, is like, it's like nice, but like, that's not black, right? That's it's not, it's not black. already been erased. That, that's, that's more, that's more of a silence than a, than an out, outcry than anything. Exactly. You know, you're silencing yourself. Fuck her. So, uh, we got to make public spaces accessible <laughs> to protest. <laughs> Whatever the fuck that means. We got to defund hmm. the fucking cops. Holla. Now we know where you stand. What have you been doing during um during COVID though? Um just I guess to keep busy. Uh working on your project. He's so shitting oh. myself plug. I'm actually designing what I imagine is going to be you guys' summertime uh recording location. You know, post Summer's here. Summer's Wait, here, bro. Whose project? Uh well. Edwin, oh, you, you've been working behind the scenes. Y'all been doing stuff. Nah, we haven't done that shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, nothing, 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 nothing's going on. Whoa, <laughs> nothing's Whoa, going on, guys. Yeah, so uh, this time next year we should be done. Uh, we should be start going in construction uh, within the next. <laughs> I think we're going to construction within the next two months. The base architect. Yeah. We making we making moves, yo. I'm about to register as a WMBE, get some of this, get some of this state money. Oh yeah, Guess might as that. well. Black enough. <laughs> yeah, man. So, like, what is what is what is what do you see as like the apex of your like uh, profession, or where where do you want to take this? Like, if you could take it as far as you can, like what like what would what would you do? What would your world look like? Also, before you say, before you respond to that, have you seen the movie with The Rock? Which one? I. Right. He's this. He's this big buff dude, and 
<laughs> he's like an action hero. Mm-hmm. And he's trying to save his family. Have you seen that movie? <laughs> oh, he's missing a leg. He's missing a leg. Fast and the Furious? <laughs> he's missing a leg and his leg gets stuck. He's an amputee and he climbs the building to the top of the building. Oh. Do you know what I'm talking no. about? I think I see. Uh, I feel <laughs> like, yeah, Skyscraper. I, I think, think I think that's what it's called. Yeah, it like came out. It's like within the last two years, right? Yeah. Yeah, I like yeah. it. I mean, I haven't I haven't seen the movie and I did and if if that was the, 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 the catch, if that was the the you know, if that was the catch twenty two is that he didn't have legs, I didn't know that either. But uh <laughs> did you just ruin the movie? <laughs> oh no, nah, him not having a leg is a, the beginning. Wait, how the okay. fuck did you get on the side of a building with no legs? You gotta see the movie, bro. It's the rock. It's the rock. Yeah. Okay. Uh so the apex of my of my of my uh industry. If it were up to me, I mean is, you, yeah. If it were up to me, my goal would be to uh change the way that we think about electricity. Uh, I think that electricity should be considered a natural resource the same way that we consider water, uh, clean air, and uh, I don't know, any other natural, I guess sewage, right? Uh, Or disposal of garbage is one of our, I guess, natural systems. Uh, Okay, maybe not garbage, but definitely water and clean air and stormwater and, you know, watching other things on the earth. And we should consider electricity to be a natural resource because we have treated it like such and we consume it like it is. And at this point, uh, you know, it doesn't make sense for any community on this planet to be without light. You know, Mm. Uh, that that doesn't compute to me that people still live in energy poverty like. I know, and and this is this this sounds crazy, but it's true. Like you know, you have people like Akon, right, uh, running programs like Light Africa, and he's like installing these these uh, municipal lights all around the country to try and bring energy to these people that have never had a light bulb. Like, like I have I have this phone, like right. This this phone basically does everything for me, but then there are people that don't even have that that can't turn on a nightlight when it is like eight p.m. Yeah, mm. I feel you, bro. So it sounds like you're trying to seize the means of production. That's what it sounds like. I'm trying to change the, the world. I'm trying to change the way that we look at it. I'm trying to change the paradigm. Oh, paradigms. Okay, all right. Paradigm. He's gonna buy land in Africa, right? Archipelago. Nah, I'm buying land in Rhode Island. Neo Neo colonialism. You in that Rhode Island nonsense, son? <laughs> I don't Yo. understand it, bro. Yo, it's happening. That's what yeah. Why, why why Rhode Island specifically? Like that's a odd choice. Uh, because of our potential. Because of the ease. Of how it, how easy it would be to overwhelm the population, frankly. Rhode Island is even the least. It's the smallest state, but it's not the least populous state. So there's plenty of states with less people in Rhode Island. Like yeah, that. but Rhode Island also has a Montana. Uh, abolitionist history, right? So uh, I believe that's where Frederick Douglass built his college, and they went and like tried to burn part of it down. Frederick Douglass, an architect. He's he, a, he's an unarchitect. He was an architect of the mind. If you can, look, bro, fuck Rhode Island, bro. We gotta move to another place, and you going? gotta build the architecture there. As a fact, I don't MC, know. if you could say something to up and coming ar- architects to kind of close us out, like what what would you say? Or up and coming anything, whatever you want, create your own uh, <laughs> your own window. We're like close our mouse. Garrett, the artist circle. Rayscapes, rayscapes, rayscapes. <laughs> uh, I would tell them that it is effective 
to figure out, to spend a lot of time figuring out your goal and to spend just as long uh, chasing it or completing it. Fine. Uh, don't make, don't make goals that are, that are intangible. Learn a fucking craft. <laughs> it's, it's, you are your only gate to your own potential. Like we live in the world of the internet. We live in the world of information. I remember when I figured this out, there's just like, there's no excuse for you not to do everything that you want in this life at this point. Uh, regardless of who you are. Like, if you have access to a computer and free time, then you can do it. Whatever it is. Holla. It's up to you. And hit up Racecapes for escaping lands and shit. Racecapes, 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 Racecapes. Yeah, hit us up. Especially y'all that live out in the Hamptons. Y'all love my shit. Alright, check out our new projects. Uh... We got we got one coming up in Brooklyn this winter. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. And that's the base.